Three years ago, I pulled this 12-year-old laptop out of a literal dumpster. And, you know, specs-wise, it is garbage. But the reason this laptop is on my desk and not back in the garbage can is because of Peppermint OS, the subject of today's video. This flavor of Linux will shock, surprise, and amaze you, and all those other clickbait titles, in a couple of ways. Does double the battery life sound appealing to you? If so, hit that like button. And on the software side, compared to Windows 10, it's actually pretty decent. It has a lot of good features, and we'll get more into that, but first, let's talk about the hardware. Booting up a computer is about the most boring thing you can do on a computer, besides watching videos on channels that aren't this one. <laughs> besides the GPU, everything on this desktop behind me was manufactured this year. Wow. It's about as good as it gets for PC hardware today. We're talking a PCIe NVMe SSD with Windows 10 on overclocked 3rd gen Ryzen. However, this one does not spark joy. This one does, however, spark electricity when you plug it in. Because it's so old, you have to go with a cheap aftermarket charger in order to get electricity into it, one of the consequences of an over a decade old laptop. This laptop rocks a core two duo, the mullet of CPU families. It had an option to ship from the factory with Windows XP. It has a spinning mechanical hard drive with less capacity than most $20 SSDs. Amazingly though, from power button to watching a YouTube video, this laptop is only about 16% or 11 seconds slower than this desktop. Despite every piece of hardware on this laptop being multiple times slower. You may have noticed during the B-roll shot that this desktop has a lot of apps that load at startup. With the exception of Wallpaper Engine and whatever bloatware Autodesk thinks that 3ds Max needs to load at startup, all of it is on this laptop too. Steam, file synchronization, temperature logging, other hardware monitoring software, it's all here too. And the insanity doesn't stop at just boot times either. I daily drove this laptop for a couple weeks using Firefox. It didn't feel slow. I didn't notice any web pages that loaded slower than I thought was comfortable. And that could have something to do with me filtering out a lot of advertisements and tracking scripts, which you can check out in this video here. Got it. Even though the Wi-Fi on this laptop tops out at five megabytes a second, I can still browse eBay comfortably for more electronic components to not finish Project IBM with. Check out my failure to finish that project up here. Now, during this trial period, I did, of course, drop my mouse for the teleprompter. There were a few times during this trial period where I did end up using the desktop for some quick web browsing, and it was noticeably quicker, snappier, and responsive. But this laptop was still 100% tolerable. Notice I'm describing this laptop the way that my parents describe me. Terms like tolerable and good enough, not words like efficient or I love you, son. <clears throat> Watching 1080p60 on YouTube with this laptop is hilarious for a couple of reasons. First, because you are both simultaneously bandwidth and processor constrained on the same machine, and also, this laptop is almost old enough to have its own YouTube account. The screen on this laptop is small, it's blurry, it, discord, it, it distorts words, it distorts color no matter what angle you look at it. The trackpad is smaller than Wi-Fi's attention span. The speakers are quiet, have no bass, and they make everything sound underwater. But this is not a roast of an old laptop this is about Peppermint OS, and Peppermint OS does wonders for the battery life. And also, you know, the keyboard on here is actually pretty decent. Reminder, this laptop and its battery are older than most Fortnite players, and I got five hours of battery life out of this laptop with reasonable screen brightness and using the internet. 
because Peppermint OS made this laptop usable, I put it on a less ancient laptop with a third gen Core i5 3320M, a one terabyte SATA SSD, and I squeezed nine hours of web browsing out of that laptop. And it also managed an amazing six and a half days of battery life in sleep mode. And this seven year old laptop wakes up from sleep so fast that by the time you've opened up the lid, it's already at the login screen. If you're a college student and you need some laptop to take notes on, look no further than your local didn't buy and see if they have any trash can specials that they may have in stock. Not to confuse system responsiveness with actual computer processing speed though, let's do a quick processor test between this laptop and this desktop. We're going to slice a complicated 3D file for printing. The Peppermint OS laptop is of course slower. And because this laptop is a dual core, I literally could not do anything else on it. The mouse would move like maybe once a minute. But on this desktop, however, Cura doesn't use even all of a six core processor. So I was able to watch YouTube, write a paper, or do something else during the same time. Linux as a whole is a lot like Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beats. There are so many weird flavors out there and it takes a lot of awful, confusing flavor trial experiences to eventually find a good one. But if you have a more modern machine that could or already has Windows 10 on it, what's good, what's going to be inconvenient, and what's going to potentially be a deal breaker if you were thinking about switching to Peppermint OS? Peppermint OS supports many of the Windows features that we've come to love over the years. Side-by-side -side Windows snapping from Windows 7 and even corner snapping from Windows 10. Both operating systems have a start menu that you can click in the bottom left corner or you can press the Windows key on your keyboard to open it. They're even both searchable. And one maybe benefit, maybe detriment, is that in Peppermint OS, if you search something that doesn't return a result, it's not going to run a Bing search for you. That's either a win or a loss, depending on how you feel about Bing. The taskbar itself is more Windows 7 than Windows 10. You have quick launch icons in the bottom left corner, rather than having a bunch of apps that would expand when they're open in Windows 10. Peppermint OS does come with a few themes to choose from, including several dark options, offering more flexibility out of the box than standard Windows 10. But in Windows, you do have other paid apps like StarDocs Window Blinds and the free Rain Meter, which will put Windows ahead in terms of easy customization. Alternatives to Rain Meter do exist for Linux, but you're going to be configuring so many configuration files that the extra effort is probably not worth it for most of you. If you want to encrypt your boot device, Microsoft requires, if you want BitLocker, the Pro version. You know, the one that costs more, like $150. And there are some potential workarounds to that in varying degrees of legality. And there are other paid services that will offer that same thing but the free Peppermint OS offers it right in the installation settings for free. Peppermint OS shows more system information when you click on the battery icon. I can actually see what my battery's wear level is. You could do that in Windows if you installed extra software, but it's nice that it's built into Peppermint OS. On this laptop that gave me five hours of light web browsing, that was with 12 watt hours of missing battery capacity due to wear. And I still got five hours out of it. Not bad. Show me a 12 year old human that can do one thing for five hours. Both of these laptops run cooler and quieter as well. On this laptop, the only thing I can hear during light web browsing, meaning no video playing, is the hard drive turning and that's it. Granted, the fan kicks in if I watch anything over 720p, but it's an old core to duo. On the more modern laptop with an SSD, it remains silent 80 plus percent of the time. It's awesome. If only all seven year olds were so quiet. Unlike Windows 10, the Peppermint OS App Store isn't going to remove a feature from your installation of Windows and then sell it back to you. Everything in the Peppermint OS App Store is completely free. 
it's free to download, and unless you're downloading something like Spotify, it's going to be ad-free, most likely, too. The Peppermint App Store contains solid apps such as OBS and Blender, as well as lots of other games that would be considered a step up from AddictingGames.com. But again, without the ads. Do note, though, that I forget on which one of these laptops, the App Store, after I installed the first one, stopped installing apps. It would always error out. However, in the App Store, it shows you the name of the package, and you can just use Terminal, which is kind of like Command Prompt for Windows, to install the apps that way. It's not as easy for first-time Linux users to get used to having to use Terminal to install your applications, but when I installed via Terminal, they worked just fine, no errors. While we're on the subject of installing apps, this is where every Linux distribution will fall short of Windows. In Windows, all you do is download an EXE or an MSI, and you're either downloading or installing the app as soon as you double-click on it assuming you don't have some garbage antivirus software that hates everything you download. An example of a best case scenario would be VNC Server and VNC Viewer. You literally download it, double click it, and it's installed. You can open it from your start menu, it shows up in the search results, you're good to go. But a less easy example would be Cura, Ultimaker Cura, 3D printing software. You can download the app image, kind of like an EXE for Windows, and you have to change the permissions in Terminal in order to make it executable. But for even worse experiences like Resilio Sync, where it gives you a nice user interface on a Windows machine, you have to open up a web browser and go to localhost port 8888 slash GUI. Granted, you can make it a bookmark, but still, it just loads up easy here, whereas you have to know what port to open on your Linux machine. And now we transition from the inconvenient to the potential deal breakers. Microsoft Office does not run on Linux. Shortcuts to the online versions do come in the included Peppermint OS start menu, and LibreOffice does exist, but PowerPoint is basically irreplaceable if you want easy eye-catching presentations in a desktop downloaded offline app. But for the rest of Office, LibreOffice Writer and Microsoft Word, honestly, I don't care which one I'm using anymore. Microsoft Excel versus LibreOffice Calc makes even less of a difference. Commands such as average, sum, and standard deviation are entered the exact same way between the two. If anything, LibreOffice is a lot more stable and quicker to load due to not being a bloated Microsoft app. Overall, I am one to two apps short of being able to put Peppermint OS on this desktop as well. I need 3ds Max for my 3D design work. Blender is a great 3D animation software, but it doesn't have a lot of the engineering features that 3ds Max design does. And also, I need a 4K video editor. There are some free video editors in the store, but they're not going to do things like chroma key and corner pinning that I need. Technically, I could get DaVinci Resolve up and running on one of these two Linux laptops, but neither one of these laptops has the hardware for it, and to port uh, DaVinci Resolve from one Linux distribution that it is supposed to work for for another is not necessarily a seamless process to put it mildly. Cura is a great example of what I've experienced with other Linux distributions where it takes extra effort to make an app launchable. It's the equivalent of an EXE, but the security settings by default don't let you run random code from the internet. But honestly, now that it's the holiday season and I'm getting with my extended family, that's them now. But now that it's the holiday season and I'm getting together with extended family, I'm thinking that, you know, for about 95% of my extended family members, that should be their default security settings. Steam does have native Linux support, but not all games on Steam do. And I'd show you some examples, but again, these laptops are so performance limited that they couldn't even run the main menu of Crisis, let alone anything else in the game. 
So you'll just have to check one of my previous videos here to get an idea of kind of where Linux compatibility was at some number of months ago. It's gotten better since then, but it's still not perfect. I think a quarter of my Steam library supposedly works and none of it's the AAA titles. Also, as easy as Peppermint OS makes adding a printer similar to Windows, printer drivers may not exist. So I still have to use a Windows machine in order to print anything to my old, really old color inkjet. There are some killer features though that Peppermint OS has that Windows just doesn't. One of those is not having forced updates that restart your machine. That's why this NAS is no longer going to be Windows based because it keeps going offline and I hate that. And not having forced updates isn't the only bonus feature. Peppermint OS also has something called ice. And no, that does not keep your computer cool in the summer. I have a lot of Raspberry Pi devices on my home network. There's a rack of them here that you can kind of see, maybe. I've got a couple redundant DNS filters. I've got my 3D printer host, and those are the two examples I'm gonna share publicly for now. And they all have web interfaces. And on this small, very low resolution laptop screen, if I'm using a web browser to get to that web interface, I've got the address bar, the favorites bar, the navigation buttons, it's all taking up very limited screen space. But ICE hides all of those parts of the browser window for you, and it just launches it through Firefox. And even better, ICE treats those specific web interfaces as apps. So I can open up my DNS filter and my 3D printing web interfaces in separate windows instead of separate tabs, and I can use the shortcut Alt-Tab to flip between them. It's pretty nice. Peppermint OS is amazing software, but who's it for? Obviously, it's not going to be your workstation if you have highly specialized software for whatever field you're in, but certainly a college student taking notes, a fanfic writer at Starbucks wanting some extra battery life, possibly family members who insist on having a power-hungry desktop even when all they do is check email and that's it, IT guys who spend a lot of time using web interfaces and want some decent battery life, that would be another solution, a kid's first gaming PC who needs an app store that doesn't require mom or dad's credit cards would be nice. But to me, it is the operating system for all of my portable devices, x86 tablets and all laptops. I cannot begin to count how many times my mom's laptop has been at 100% hard drive usage even when not a single app was open. Thanks Windows 10. Also, since switching over to Peppermint OS myself, not once have I taken my charger cord with me if I'm going to a two hour meeting. I'm also significantly less worried about laptop theft because I have full drive encryption, they're not gonna get anything, and because you can use absolute garbage laptops like this, the security software for tracking down your laptop would cost more than just buying a new garbage laptop. Peppermint OS is what every laptop should ship with. Change my mind. Seriously, download and try it on a USB. You don't have to erase anything to try it. But somehow, if you're still not convinced by this and want to be convinced of something else, try one of these other videos. If you want to convince other people to start using keyboard shortcuts, then pick up one of these t-shirts off Amazon, link in the description. As for now, I've got to get this NAS off of Windows and then take the wife out to lunch. So that's going to be it for today. See you in the next one.